Sheriff Steve Prater. Hey, Sheriff Steve, how are you this morning? I'm doing fine, Harry. I, I'm not. I, I got a little if cough it, here, if Steve. If it sounds like I'm irritated with you, I'm not. You know that. <laughs> it's just that Aaron is, is I know you're going to find this hard to believe, sort of freaking out at the other end of the broadcast table here. So I don't know if there's anything you can do to to allay to calm her fears of imminent demise, but but anything well, that you surely it's not that bad. Well, <laughs> surely I've... Aaron's gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna live. <laughs> okay, you're gonna live. You're gonna live. It's Thank gonna be you. Fine. Everything is gonna. The river's gonna rise again. That's gonna be what we're gonna be fussing about. Okay. And, uh, my, my, it, it's going to be okay. My friend Steve, we have a positive, a presumptive positive case of coronavirus in Caddo Parish. You're head of Homeland Security. You're obviously in the loop. Uh, what can you tell us about this case? What do we know? Well, I can't tell you who the person was because I don't even know. Uh, I can't tell you the hospital they reported to because I'm not sure of that. The, there's, a, there's a real gulf in my hip -hop. Uh, allows uh, someone that's not involved in the medical community to know, and and that's appropriate. All we know is it was in Caddo Parish. I talked to Dr. White, and she's the expert, and she knows the details about this particular case. And and uh, in the hospital, and and Dr. White are doing the appropriate thing as far as following up on people that the person might have been in contact with. That's what I uh, wanted. That's, to, that's what I wanted to that. know about because, you know, all of my friends. Uh, and, and people in my circle say, why won't they tell us where this person has been before? So we, can, so, so we can ease, but, but, it, but it would ease my mind if I knew, you know, this guy hung out at, you know, at XYZ nursing home. Part, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't go there. I'm not in jeopardy. Pardon me, Sheriff Steve, just a second. No, there's nothing that would ease your mind. Yes, there would. Is, is there a reason they can't say where, you yeah, know, HIPAA laws? He just, but we're not naming well, him. There's a, well, there's, think about it this way. I stopped last night on the way to the house. I got gasoline at one place, and I stopped and got some Gatorades at another place. Eat, I was real cognizant of the fact of everything that I touch now. Not, I was just trying to kind of almost do a study uh, for myself. And I pushed on the door handle to go in the store, as about 30 other people had done. I went to the cooler and opened that up and got the Gatorade, went and got money out of my pocket and uh, paid and leaned up against the counter and then pushed on the other side of the door to get out. When I went to get gas, I used the gas pump and so on. So, mm -hmm. In other words, it doesn't really matter if it was in Broadmoor or if it was in Allendale or where it might have been. The chances are good that someone that has or is near that person has been somewhere near where you so basically what so you're really saying is, the point you're making to Aaron is, and, and I'll repeat it, that, that, that whether you realize it or not, indirectly, you come in contact with probably fifty to 100,000 people a day. Probably so. Probably so. Uh, I don't know where the number that you just called, but I know a lot of people. But you see my, but you see my point, of I guess. Yes, I do, and a lot of what people have touched, uh, you come in contact with. And, um, and, and so it's, it's you can't just completely be away and isolate yourself. There's a lot of things in Caddo Parish, a lot of other diseases, and a lot of other things in Caddo Parish and every parish that are uh, even worse than what we're talking about with with COVID nineteen that you're going to come in contact with or that you're going in a close proximity to. And so, what I'm saying is, we have to take this seriously. We have to improve our hygiene, and it will help all around the fact that this is is here, is present, because people will wash their hands more. I would imagine there will be less flu. There will be less colds because of just the improved hygiene that we'll have. But back to the COVID-19, you know, we've got we've to stay away from large crowds right now, wash your hands, Use common sense. If you get it, you're going to usually survive, uh, especially the younger people are going to survive. Uh, an older person, not you know, they're going to have probably more complications. So everybody just needs to take a deep breath and relax and let's use our heads, not get overexcited, but just continue to wash your hands and do the appropriate thing things that we need to do. Sheriff, if this person was at a, let's say, high school reunion two weeks ago, Will you be notifying right. the people who were there, who were at that event? 
How does that work? I, I won't. Um, it, my office won't. Um, it, it, it's, it will be up to the medical community to do that because that would then be honing in on who it might be. You go to the, the you would go to the uh, reunion and you might say, hey, did you shake hands with uh, John Doe? Did you dance with John Doe? Did you share a drink with him? Then that's going to say who it was. And so we won't actually at this point be involved in that. We'll be glad to help if they need anything. We'll support them. But this is a, this is a medical thing. Uh, the, mm-hmm. Like I say, we're doing the things that fall under my purview, like the jail and the visitation and the things, uh, you know, testing the attorneys that come out there. Uh, because as you can see, that's a huge problem for us, 1,300 to 1,500 prisoners. And if you get a case in there, it's kind of like on a cruise ship. You know, it's, mm-hmm. uh, and then somebody gets ready to bond out, are you going to say, hey, we're going to keep you an extra 14 days somewhere, and we don't have a place to keep them anyway. So it is a huge problem. Mm, interesting. You made oh, a, a huge you, challenge. You, you made a change to way. your visiting policy at the jail. Explain that and why. Right. We uh, Anybody that comes into the facility through the main door is going to get temperature and have a little five-question questionnaire just to try to do the best we can to keep people out that might possibly be infected. Uh, of course, people can pass it on and be infected without symptoms, so that presents a problem, but we're going to just uh, play the odds and do the best we can do. Video visitation will still uh, carry on like it was, but not at the facility. Uh, you have to, and, and people can go to the website and figure out how to, visit with their loved ones uh, you know, visitation uh, and basically that's that's where it stands of course we've been trying to admit as few people as possible because we don't try to arrest people it's just when they screw up you know. uh, and so we're trying on like on misdemeanors some misdemeanors we'll really you know judge it hard whether they even need to go through that or do a summons um, you know we're just doing common sense type things that that uh, if we feel like they'll come to court, then we're going to do the misdemeanor summons route. 